Welcome to day 74, where we're going to use CSS to make sure that any web page you design looks totally beautiful. As long as you've got an artistic eye. Otherwise, you're going to be pinching the styling code from somewhere else. So, so far, we've built our web page and it was a bit boring. It was white background, black text, or whatever the default of your web browser was. Well, how do we style it up? Back in the old days of web development, we used to have to manually tell every piece of text what it was going to look like, and that was a bit laborious, until they invented a thing called CSS, or a cascading style sheet. Now, the more observant about you would have seen in our file tree on the left-hand side a file already called style.css, and may have noticed in our boilerplate code this line where we bring it in, in the head. Well. This is great because by default, any REPL you create will have a link to a style.css page, which will load all the styling. Happy days. You can also do it in line with a style command, but honestly, it's a little bit easier. Just use the boilerplate code at this point. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Well, here's our first bit of CSS code, and it is telling the tags how to behave. So in this case, it's telling us that the HTML and the body tags need to be 100% wide and 100% tall. What does that mean? That means it fills the page. Let's go back to our HTML page and put a few bits and pieces in. Okay, I've built a very simple web page here of page two of my collection of famous baldies. This time, Yul Brynner, amazing guy. But how do I start? styling up this page. Let's go to our style.css page and add some code to specifically target the heading. So I'm going to say h1. I'm going to bring in my curly braces. Inside my curly braces, I'm going to define a number of properties. I'm going to start by naming my font family. And that could be a font we've got installed or it could be a general type. I'm just going to go for sans serif. That means text that those little things on them, serifs, I'm sure you can Google it. Make sure that each line is terminated by a semicolon. That's a really important thing. It's the equivalent of a full stop in CSS. I'm going to change the size of it to about 24 pixels. I'm going to change the color to blue. And you notice that when I finished typing that and I selected it, Replit brought in the color picker for me. I can actually double click on that and I can pick any color I want and it'll put in the exact code. So if I want that one, I'm going to press enter and it's replaced the color with the hexadecimal code for that exact color I picked, which is why it's so nice. I'm also going to change the background color of the tag and I'm going to make it, let's have a think. If I start off with yellow, I can pick something a little bit nicer from the color picker. Let's go for just sort of a faded, let's, have, let's go for sort of an orange usually goes well with, there we go. And it's giving us the right color. If I refresh now, you'll see that that tag has taken on the properties I've given it. I can do the same thing for every bit of text on the page. If I add in a P tag, I'm going to bring in this, but of course I'm going to bring the font size down to about 10 pixels. And if I refresh, I'm going to get that in blue. We could set it to a monospace font, which is often quite nice for people that do coding not quite as good for writing a web page contents. We could change our heading font to something like cursive, which gives us a bit more of an old worldy style look, or we can change it to fantasy where we're bringing in those avatar vibes. Now I'm by the way, not claiming to be an amazing designer here. Your mileage may vary with how nice you can get this to look without professional intervention. Now, of course, if we want a background color on the entire page, we can do that here. Maybe not red though. <laughs> Maybe just sort of a nice light gray. I refresh. And we've got that going now. Now, the interesting thing is then is we can adjust the alignment of the text. Now, text align has a number of properties, left, right, center, and align. But depending on what you want, I center align that. I'm going to do the same thing for my P tags. Of course, my heading here isn't working too well, so that's an H2. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a comma in here and apply that same code to H2. 
And of course, because I want H2 to be a bit smaller, what I can do then is follow that up with my own definition of H2, where I just change the font size. Now this is quite nice because it inherits, in that same way that we looked at object-orientated programming, it inherits everything from the first definition, and I can just change that here to 12 pixels, and it'll get all the color information and we'll just override the size. That always has to come later in the commands. Of course, I could just copy and paste it and change it if I wanted to, but it's nice to have that inheritance. Now, the only problem I've got here is with my image because we can also use CSS to style image classes. But what can we do? Well, we can control the width and the height, certainly. Now, you'll see there, I've made it squashed just to show that it's working, but Anything you put in the CSS overrides what you've set up in the page. That probably needs to be about 250. Poor old Yule is looking a bit squashed there, a bit stretched. There we go. Now, unfortunately, there's a bunch we need to do to align at the center. It's not as easy as adding just align center. We're going to add in a bunch of stuff here that's going to happen. So let's talk through these. The first property is displays how it's going to be shown. In a block means that immediately afterwards, the next item should start on the next line. The margin left and the margin right is the space to either side of it. And the width is going to be how wide it is. So I don't really need these two properties. But basically, I've said I want my image to be half as wide as the page it's in. And then I want my margins to be automatically sized either side of it. And that puts it in the center. And that is a bit of a faff. But let me tell you, putting an image in the center using CSS is an arcane dark art. So if you've got that, you've sorted it. It's also possible to directly address a single tag by giving it a class name. Now, back in our HTML, we can add to any tag by, and I'm going to do it to this first P tag, by adding the argument class and giving it a name. So I've called this blurb. That doesn't change anything on the page. And in fact, it's a hidden element. But what that gives me the power to do in CSS, it gives me the power to directly address that. So if I do dot blurb, this is going to give me the opportunity to specifically style this piece of text and leave this one alone. This one, I might want to make it italic. So I can use font style and go for italic there. You can notice there's a bunch of others that it's offering as we go. And if I refresh this, you see that only this text box has become italic while this one has left it the way it was. This means we might even want to change the other properties of it, like font weight, which is where I might want to add bold to it. And the nice thing about adding a class to a particular tag is I can target that particular tag. Now, common problems here, mainly it has to be said, is forgetting the semicolons at the end of the line, or just not knowing what properties you can have. On the screen at the moment is a link to the W3 schools list of all the CSS properties that exist. There's loads of them. But by far the easiest way forward for you, if you need to do something, is to quickly Google it. CSS, central line image. You'll find the code you need. You bring it into your style.css file, and you go from there. Another common problem is this. If you don't have that reference to the CSS file, then it just loads a bog standard web page. You can, of course, just bring that link code back to link it, but you can also add a style tag and simply paste the CSS into that, and that CSS is locked into the page. The problem with this approach, though, is that if I wanted this CSS to serve multiple pages, I have to copy and paste it. And if I decide to change my font styles, I'm going to have to go in and change those in every single page, and that's going to be quite problematic. The easiest thing to do is to use the default boilerplate code and keep your style.cs file, style.css file separate. As usual, I've broken a bunch of code. See if you can fix my page for me and make it look beautiful. Your challenge for day 74 is to go and get yesterday's code, copy and paste it in, and now go and use CSS to style it up how you want. Make it look beautiful. Let's have boxes around things. Let's make it be one of the most amazing pieces of work you've ever seen. When you're done, share it with us in the community by publishing it and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to share it with us on social media. Tomorrow's challenge is going to be entirely HTML and CSS based. 
you're going to be building your own Linktree website. Thank <music> you.